All right, so I think the one big remaining item that we've been discussing on and off for the last year is, are we going to do a video? We talked about the idea of a video as sort of an introduction to let people know in just a few moments what is all has gone into this. What are we celebrating here? What all the activities involved? If we were going to do a video, in my mind, one of the main things we would have to do is thank John Hogg for his paper posthumously, of course, but there's no doubt about it that we used a lot of information that came from this paper. We could not have submitted this without the way he wrote this was great. It was full of technical details covering 40 years of chemistry at Upjohn, but it had some humor in it too. So if we were to do a video, primary thing up front, I think would be to thank John Hogg for the contribution of that paper. Then of course, with, to go with John Hogg's paper, there's Jeremy Winkworth's website, upjohn.net. We pulled a lot of information off that. If we were to make this video, we'd wanna of course say thank you to Jeremy for his website. Well, thank you, Steve. Oh, uh, Jeremy! <laughs> thank you. Thank you for upjohn.net. Yes. yes. Um, I started it about 10 years ago. We were fortunate the Upjohn company kept so much information, even back into the 1800s but as recent as the 50s and the 60s and the 70s, we can look at all these glorious photos and look at the things the Upjohn Company did and, and understand just how much of a part of history we were, mm -hmm. all of us. It's fascinating to, to look through. It's, it, it's a history of a whole a corporation yeah. um, from the earliest days. Well, it was definitely invaluable for this project because the, I think the main reason our submission <laughs> cruised through ACS as fast as it did with, with zero questions zero iterations on what went into it was because we had all of this reference material and photos and videos, everything that you had put up there, readily accessible to the public already. So if we were to make a video, be part of our dedication event, we would definitely want to reach out to you and say thank you for upjohn.net. And thanks to Jeremy's website, we've got all these great old photos from the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, and the 80s. Wouldn't it be great to get somebody in here that was actually there who did the work to talk about what it was like to work on some of these historic activities. Great like idea. here's this photo, yeah. Team Wabta from the 70s, front and center, Fred Antaj, he was there. He would be great to get Fred in here, but I don't know if he would ever actually come in and be part of a video. Actually, Steve, I just had me walking by, heard my name being mentioned, so I might as well just stop in and see. Fred Antaj, ladies on? and gentlemen. Oh, Excuse yes. me. <laughs> Fred, great photo. So what was it like being part of Team Wapcha, working on cytosterol and all the discoveries that went along with that? It was great. I, I was the analytical chemist. It's probably analytical support for both the chemists, the biochemists, and, and fermentation people. And uh, I was involved in the, actually the isolation of the degradation products of cytosterol, isolating them, identifying them, and like to go back in, in history yeah. because we had to use preparative TLC, column chromatography, isolate them, and then do it further. Now today, you have a HPLC mass spec, just inject and get all the information at once in one in So yeah. things have changed quite a bit since the 70s. Okay, well, you know, I'm thinking that if we were to get Fred to come in for a video, this is kind of what we would do. He'd probably <laughs> never do it, but you know, this would be the idea. <laughs> And even earlier, we've got these photos going all the way back to the 50s, like this one of the chemistry lab where Anna May Searcy at the bench from 1954, Up John News. Wouldn't it be spectacular if we could get Anna May to come in and be part of a video? Wait, it's Anna May Searcy. Hi. <laughs> Glad to be here. <laughs> Anna May, tell us about this photo. Do you remember what was going on? Who else is in it? Yes, uh, Alan Nathan is uh, checking out a melting point, which is one thing we did for all of our, to find out if we really got the product. And the other one is Bob Jackson. Okay. Uh, they're both deceased, uh -huh. as are most of the people that worked on this project. Yeah. I came to Upjohn's in 1948. So a photo from 1954, what are we, 65 years later? Do you remember what was in that cylinder you're holding? Oh. <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> I'm glad. I'm lucky to remember what, how much I've told you. <laughs> okay, well, I mean, this is exactly what we would want to do with a video if we could pull this together, but I, I don't know how we would possibly do it. 
but it'd be wonderful to have somebody here who was involved in that work, like, uh, oh, maybe Jim Lauderdale for MGA. What an opportunity to join this group of true leaders for the Upjohn Company. Jim Lauderdale. <laughs> My history with MGA started in 1967, and as Anna Mae shared that the corticosteroids and the progestogens were really under synthesis, uh, moving away from uh, uh, natural product extractions in the 50s and 60s. And she also talked about collaboration. Uh, in those days, there was a human reproduction group and an animal reproduction group, and both groups were looking for something that would help manage reproduction. And so out of the human side, medroxyprogesterone acetate came, uh, two steps different from progesterone, which became Depo-Provera, I believe still the largest uh, contraceptive in the world. That's what's been so great about working on this project is we're covering a 40-year span and the depth and breadth of all the discoveries, all the products across the entire pharmaceutical market. It's just amazing, definitely worth of, of historical landmark dedication. So yeah, I think if we make this video, getting Jim in to talk about the animal health piece, <laughs> something we should definitely do. So. If we were to do a video, I think the things we just discussed are what we would try to do. All the activities that went into this and the accomplishments and really bring home the point that this is a historical occasion, historical work worthy of a, of a landmark in the ACS program. That's a wrap.